Hey there, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll explore how to set up multi-zone lighting in Home Assistant using the floor plan dashboard. I'll walk you through two methods, one for lighting specific zones within the room layout on the dashboard, and another for illuminating the entire space. Let's dive in and see how it's done. In this video, I'll show you how to indicate that a room is illuminated on the dashboard whenever any of its lights are on. If you'd like to learn how to create the dashboard you're seeing on screen, check out the video I made on building it, I'll link it up here. Watch that first, then come back here. I'll go over two different ways to display lighting on the dashboard. The first method shows an image of the entire room lit up as soon as any light in the room is on. In the second method, I'll split the room into different zones, each with its own lighting. This way, images will layer up depending on which lights are on, giving a more dynamic view of the lighting in each area. Before starting your setup, watch both methods to decide which one you prefer. I'll be setting this up in the kitchen and dining area, so let's get started. First, I'll create a new folder to organize all the images we'll need. Open the file editor, click on the folder icon, and scroll down to the www folder. Then, click the Create New Folder icon, name it Multiple Light, and click OK. Next, enter the new folder and click on the Upload File icon. For the first method, I'll upload an image of the entire room lit up. If you're unsure how to create these images, don't worry, I'll show you how at the end of the video. Now, let's go back to the floor plan dashboard on the Overview page. Click on the Edit View icon in the top right, and then click on Edit at the bottom left. First, let's create a new conditional element. Start by adding a title to keep your elements organized, I'll name this one Kitchen. Next, click the Condition button and select the OR option. Inside the OR box, add a new condition and choose the Entity State option. Enter the first entity that represents a light in the room you're configuring and set its state to on. Repeat this for each light in the room. In my case, I'll configure two more entities for lights in the kitchen and dining area. Now, below the OR box, add a new image element. Choose local path or web URL and enter the path to the uploaded image. This image will appear over the floor plan whenever any of the lights you just configured are turned on. It may not fit perfectly yet but we'll adjust that shortly. In the style box, set the width to 100%. Now the image size should look correct. Once that's done, hit save. Now, with the kitchen light turned on, the room shows as lit up. Anytime one of the configured lights is on, the room will appear illuminated. Now let's configure the floor plan to show switches that will control these lights. To do this, you'll need two images for the switch, one for on and another for off. I've uploaded two images of a sun off switch, but you can find plenty of free switch images online. Once your images are uploaded, go back to edit mode. First, add an image element, then select the entity that represents the light and add a title. Set the tap behavior to toggle and the hold behavior to more info. Next, click on Local Path or Web URL and enter the path to the image that shows the switch in the on position. A large image of the switch may appear on the floor plan, but we'll adjust that in a moment. In the State Image box, you'll enter the image for the off state. Insert Off, followed by the path to the off image. Now, adjust the switch's position on the floor plan by setting the top and left values for its location and the width to control its size. I'll set mine to fit well in the layout. With that done, check to ensure the switch is positioned correctly. Adjust your image to where you'd like it on the floor plan. Next, go back in the element editor and duplicate this setup for each light you want to control. For each duplicate, change the entity, title, and position while keeping the same image paths. Once all switches are set up, click Save. Now, if I click on the switch to turn on any of the lights, the room will light up. 
whether one light or all lights are on, the room will display as illuminated. Now let me show you another way to display which lights are on, but this time by individual zones within the room. First, let's go back to edit mode. I'll delete the existing elements to start fresh. After deleting all elements, I'll click save. Now we'll begin by adding images that represent each zone of the room. If you don't know how to create these images, I'll cover that at the end of the video. To upload the images, go to the file editor, click on the folder icon, open the www folder, then go to the multiple light folder, and start uploading the images. Each image should correspond to a specific zone of the room, matched to each light. Once all images are uploaded, go back to the overview and click edit on the dashboard. Add a new conditional element. The first element I'll add will be for the kitchen, representing the light on the kitchen side of the room. I'll set the title to kitchen and add a new condition, selecting the kitchen entity with the state set to on. Next, add a new image element that represents this specific area when illuminated, in my case, the kitchen side of the room. Set the local path or web URL and enter the path to your image. In the style box, set the width to 100% and adjust the opacity to 0.7. Lowering the opacity is important since multiple images will layer over each other, otherwise, only the top layer would be visible. Once saved, if I go back to the dashboard and turn on the kitchen light, the room will show only the kitchen area illuminated, while the dining area remains darker. To add the rest of the zones, go back to edit mode. Now, duplicate the conditional element you just created. This method is faster, you'll only need to replace the title, entity, and image path, keeping the rest of the values the same. Repeat these steps for each light area by clicking the back arrow in the element editor and duplicating for the next area. When all zones are added, click Save. On the dashboard, I have both the kitchen and sink lights on, so these two areas are lit up. If I turn off the kitchen light, only the sink area remains illuminated. If you turn on all the lights, each zone will be fully lit. In my case, the kitchen, sink, and dining area. Now, let's add switches to control the lights in each zone of the room. It's important to first add the image elements for all lit areas before adding switches, otherwise, the switches might end up layered underneath the room images, and they won't function correctly. Enter edit mode by clicking the edit link, then add an image element. Select the entity you want to associate with the switch image, and add a title. I'll choose the kitchen entity and title it kitchen. Set the tap behavior to toggle and the hold behavior to more info. Next, under local path or web URL, enter the path to the image that shows the switch on. You'll see a large switch image appear over the floor plan, but we'll adjust that next. In the state image box, add the image path for the switch off by inserting off, followed by the path to that image. Now, adjust the switch position on the floor plan by setting the top and left values for location, and specify the width to control its size. I'll set mine with values that fit nicely over the floor plan. Now, if we check, the switch image should be correctly positioned. Adjust yours to the position that best fits. Next, click the back arrow in the element editor and repeat these steps for each light in the room by duplicating the switch you just set up. Just change the entity, name, and position for each switch, the image paths will remain the same. Now, I can see all the switches on the floor plan. Once all switches are added, click Save. Now, I'll turn off all the lights so you can see that areas with the lights turned off are darker, with a bit of light from other areas still on. When I turn each switch on, the corresponding area lights up. That's all the configuration needed for this zone separated look. You can repeat these steps for other rooms, but remember to set up all conditional elements representing the lit areas before adding any switches, so the images layer correctly. If you want to learn how to easily create the area images, keep watching, I'll guide you through it step by step. To get started, you'll need a floor plan already created. 
There are several applications for this, and I use Sweet Home 3D. I'll leave a link in the description. After creating your floor plan, the next step is to edit it. You can use any image editor, like Photoshop or GIMP, but I'll show you how to do it in Photopea, an online, free editor that I've referenced in other videos, no installation needed. Go to photopea.com and drag your floor plan image into the drop zone on the screen. In this video, I'll be creating images for the kitchen and dining area. You can repeat these steps for each of your rooms. In the Layers panel on the right, right-click the background layer and select Duplicate Layer. On the left, select the Rectangular Selection tool and make a selection around the room area you want to create images for. Ensure the duplicated layer is selected, then click the Add Mask icon, a light gray rectangle with a black circle inside, at the bottom right. A mask should now appear next to the duplicated layer. Hide the original layer by clicking the eye icon next to it. Now, only your selected room area will be visible. Right-click the new mask and select Apply. With the duplicate layer selected, create a new mask by clicking the Add Mask icon again. Select this new mask, then go to the toolbar and select the Gradient tool. A gradient configuration bar will appear at the top, click it. Move the white slider toward the middle of the bar, then click OK. With the duplicate layer mask selected, use the gradient tool to create a gradient mask by clicking and dragging a line across the room, from the darkest to the brightest point. At the bottom of the layers panel, click on the adjustment layer icon, a half white, half gray circle, and select levels. In the Properties tab that opens, drag the white slider to the left to adjust the brightness, and use the gray slider to fine-tune it. Now the image is ready to export. Go to File Export Export as PNG. Name the image according to the area it represents, then click Save. The image will be saved to the Downloads folder to create additional images for other areas. Start by selecting the mask you created for the duplicate layer. Repeat the gradient mask steps, adjusting the direction of the gradient to highlight different areas. Repeat these steps for all areas, adjusting the gradient to fit your lighting setup. All right, that wraps up our tutorial. Now you've got a setup that dynamically shows your room lighting by zones and home assistant, perfect for customizing your dashboard. Thanks so much for watching. If you learned something new today, please give this video a like, and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials like this. See you in the next one.